Hello, thank you for joining. This is Corin Tunes for Concert Band. I'm Mr. Spur. Corin Tunes, Corin Tunes, happy Friday, Corin Tunes. So in today's lesson, we'll begin with a breathing exercise. Next, we'll move on to some sight reading, and then we'll end with uh, looking at the Standards of Excellence book. Students will be able to sight read rhythms using syncopated eighths and quarters, and then they will also comprehend intervallic relationships between notes in the major scale. So, breathing exercise. Let's just do some tactical breathing. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh yeah, and we're gonna do this four times through. I'll keep counting my fingers for you. And one, two, three, four. Breathe in. All right, let's take a look at the sight reading. All right, here's the rhythm of the day. First, we'll count a cold. Next, we'll figure out how to count it. Then we'll count it one more time. And then finally, we'll get to play it on our band instruments. So with the click, here we go. Ready and count. One and three. One and three, four. And, and, and four. And three, and tricky I know so take a moment now to pause the video write down the rhythm and then together we're going to count this out so we have a few tricky rhythms in here that the syncopation is a little bit tough so this is what I like you to do instead of drawing a skeletal pattern for just those identified rhythms I want you to draw a skeleton for the entire thing so eighth notes everywhere I'm gonna Take a moment of our time to just throw them up on the board and then we'll start counting them out. So as you can see, I did something a little different. Instead of writing just single eighth notes, I actually beam them up into the beat itself. So it's going to be in pairs of two because two eighth notes fit into one quarter note. And because it's a four four measure or four four um, time signature, the quarter note gets the beat. So that's how I decided to divide it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to count this guy out. So, here we are. First beat of the measure, that's on one. Bringing us to the next eighth count, that would be the end of one. Knowing that a quarter note takes up two eighth notes worth. We erase two eighth notes, meaning this rest is on the end of two. Quarter note takes up two eighth notes worth. That's on beat three. And then this quarter rest takes up two eighth notes worth. That's on beat four. That's a moment of silence. We'll leave it alone. Eighth for an eighth. Erase it. That's on beat one. Quarter note for two eighths. But that's a quarter rest, so that's going to be nothing. That's a beat of silence. And then, eighth for an eighth, that would be the end of two. Two eighths for a quarter, that would be three. Two eighths for a quarter, that would be four. Now, measure three, the tricky one. So, eighth rest for an eighth note. And then, right on that quarter, we raise two eighth notes for one quarter. That's the end of one. Making sure I'm not making any noise on my piano. Another quarter note. Erase two eighth notes, that's the end of two. Eighth for an eighth, that would be the end of three. Two eighth notes for a quarter, that's beat four. And then we have eighth for an eighth, that's a rest, so we'll leave it blank. Two eighths for a quarter, that's the end of one. And then we have eighth for an eighth, that's another rest, leave it blank. Eighth for an eighth, that's on beat three. And then two eighths for a quarter, that would be the end of three. I'm going to erase that for you. And then an eighth for an eighth, that's a rest, leave it blank. Okay, let's try counting this out again. 
Here we go. I'll turn that on. Two. Ready? Count. One and three. One and three. Four. And 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 four. And three and. Cool. Let's try playing it now. We'll play it on a concert B flat. Yeah. One, two, ready, play. Notice how I made these longer because those quarter notes are actually longer notes. Okay? Before we were doing one and two and three and four and but these right here are actually longer, so make sure you give it that proper value. All right, let's now move on to standards of excellence. All right, so open up your books to page five, number 20. This is interval inquiry. So some of you might remember last year we talked about intervals. Intervals are just the distance between two different pitches. Okay, so... You'll notice that for each measure, it's just two half notes. It starts on B flat. Let me see if that can get louder. There we are. And then it moves up a step. Back to the tonic, then to the third. And as it keeps on going back and forth between the tonic and the notes, it actually assigns different distances between the notes. First, seconds, thirds, Seconds, thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths, and eighths, or octaves. Okay? So, what I would like us to do first is I want us to just play each interval one at a time. Okay? So, the first interval that we'll deal with at measure one is the second. That goes from concert B flat to C. Now, when we learn these intervals, you can remember how they sound by um, assigning different songs to these intervals. So a song that I like to assign to the second would be Happy Birthday. Everyone knows Happy Birthday. That's just a second right there. So if you start playing that, get that in your ear because that's going to be really common throughout all the songs that you'll play through the rest of your life. That's what you call a second, a major second. All right, let's take a look at the second measure. That would be the third. When we hear thirds, we think of the doorbell. That's what I think of whenever I hear a third. So make sure you recognize that when write doorbell. Coming up next, this is what we would call a perfect fourth. Probably one of the most famous songs that we can use to recognize this would be. The Wedding March. That's just from B flat to E flat, C to F, G to C. Or every single timpani part that was written in the 18th century. That's a fourth, okay? Remember that. Oh yeah, I gotta write that down. Wedding. Then the fifth. The fifth has tons of songs that use the fifth. Probably one of the most famous ones, probably one of the most timeless, I would say, would be this one. It starts from the first and goes, B flat goes to F, C to G, G. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. We're going to write twinkle down. 
Moving on to the six. That would be on the next page. I'm using some of my theory handouts from when I was in college. So, one of the examples I have here is actually the NBC theme. Let's see if I remember how that goes. That's right. E flat, G, E flat, C, A, F, G, E, T. All it is. It's just G, B e flat, the first two notes. That's a six. Remember that. Right, NBC. Then we have the seventh. This one's a little trickier, but that's okay. That's from uh, the song Pure Imagination from Willy Wonka. Where uh, I think it's uh, Willy Wonka has all the kids in the chocolate factory and it's in the, the um, Candyland place of pure imagination. And uh, they're all excited. And uh, he actually sings that seventh. B flat to A or C to B or G to F sharp. seventh right there that right there is the one that you want to pay attention to okay all right uh pure imagination because that's the name of the song and then the eighth or the octave i'm going to write a v a because that's how you write octave anyway in music lingo so there are a few um songs um, but probably one of the most famous ones would be this one that goes like this. So that is Somewhere Over the Rainbow from The Wizard of Oz, where Dorothy's singing about, you know, a place far, far away that's a lot better than where she is. That just goes from one B flat to the next B flat, or C, C, or G, G. That's an octave, okay? All right, rainbow down. Now that we have songs to help us identify those different intervals, what I would like us to do is to actually play the stinking exercise now, number 20. Okay, we'll go second, third, fourth. 5th, 6th, 7th. And we'll do it with a metronome. These are half notes, so each note gets two clicks. Here we are. 1, 2, ready, play. Now, I know for some of you, these notes, especially the higher ones, are going to be a bit challenging, maybe for uh, clarinet specifically, when you have that B and C. So, check your fingering chart. And then also, don't forget that trick that I showed you. I think I have a clarinet right here, actually. Give me a second. Aha! Here we are. So, start with your C, you know, thumb, one, two, three. <laughs> And then you take your thumb and you put that down while still covering the back hole. And then you just start adding fingers. And then remember, this one right here, that's for your C. And then this key right here, that's for your B. And I know some of you like doing the different fingerings, but these are the correct ones. Trust me on this. Okay? So remember, the trick goes. That's how you'll access those notes. So by the time you're playing through this exercise, you'll be able to hit those last two. Uh, here we are. Let's see. 
You might even want to take the time just to practice those two measures all by yourself. Anyway. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can contact me through the three methods written on the board here. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you next time, and stay safe out there.